very much uh, for joining us here. And I want to begin by both welcoming and uh, extending uh, my thanks to my counterpart, United States uh, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, who uh, joins us on the eve of the opening of the International Security Forum hosted here in Halifax. And so, Secretary Panetta, I, I really want to tell you how grateful we are for your presence. We've had a great uh, bilateral this morning, a chance to discuss some very salient issues for both our countries, uh, issues that relate to our collective continental defense. I'm talking about uh, subject matters such as the, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter Program and uh, our mutual interest in the, the procurement of this uh, 21st century aircraft to protect uh, North America uh, to continue to be interoperable and work together in international missions as we've seen most recently uh, in the mission uh, Unified Protector in Libya. We also had the chance uh, to discuss in the broader concept uh, continental security, our collective interest in working together through NORAD, through the Joint Permanent Board on Defense, and uh, our collective efforts both in Libya and uh, the ongoing efforts in Afghanistan and Canada assuming a more prominent role uh, on the training side with the recent promotion of uh, Major General Mike Day, uh, the role that we have assumed there with 900 plus Canadian trainers in and around Kabul uh, figures very prominent in the further transition of responsibility for security to the Afghan people, the Afghan government. And so uh, Canada, U.S. Uh, are working very closely in the defense relationship and partnership here in North America, but certainly around the globe. Our collective efforts around global security uh, are extremely important. It's a high priority for Canada, and this is why, again, it's a great honor to host Secretary Panetta here in Halifax uh, at this International Security Conference. Over to you, Leon. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister McKay, uh, Peter. It's, uh, it's a tremendous honor for me to uh, have the opportunity uh, to be here on uh, the minister's home turf of Nova Scotia. Uh, as a former member of the U.S. Congress, uh, I know how important it is to uh, maintain a close connection to your constituency. And uh, on that basis, uh, I, would, I would invite you to uh, come to my constituency in Monterey, California, when you get a chance, because uh, that's another beautiful part of the world as well. Uh, this is my uh, first trip to Canada as uh, Secretary of Defense, but I've had the opportunity to come here a number of times uh, in other capacities, both as a member of Congress, uh, as uh, Chief of Staff to uh, President Clinton, uh, as a CIA Director, uh, and uh, now as Secretary of Defense. Uh, I. I believe very deeply that this is a special relationship, uh, a very special relationship between our two countries. Uh, we share more than, uh, than a border with our uh, Canadian allies. We share a common history, we share common values, and we share a common approach to advancing our security interests. Uh, all of this has led to a defense relationship that we enjoy today, one, uh, one of the strongest defense relationships that we have uh, in the world. We share a vision for extending peace and prosperity through a, a very broad alliance structure, both as NATO allies and as advocates for an enduring multilateral engagement, both here in North America and around the globe. And today we had a chance to discuss a number of ways to uh, expand that cooperation uh, in tackling some of the most pressing challenges that we face, not only around the world, but here in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, so we talked about uh, working to improve our coordination uh, in this area as well, dealing with uh, trafficking of narcotics, with weapons, with uh, with people, with uh, the ability to try to uh, secure borders, et cetera. One of, one of the key ways to approach these problems is by fostering regional security forums, 
uh, such as the Conference of Defense Ministers of the Americas, and by building the capacity of our neighbors to counter these kinds of threats. And I look forward to, to working with uh, Peter McKay in trying to expand that cooperation. Uh, we also discussed uh, NATO summit uh, that we'll be having in Chicago, and obviously there'll be a full agenda there. Uh, and our, our efforts there will be to declare the interim capability for NATO's European territorial missile defense, the next steps on Afghanistan, and obviously further ways to strengthen the transatlantic uh, alliance that we enjoy. For more than 50 years, more than 50 years, we've been partnered together on the homeland defense through NORAD. Uh, the headquarters I had a chance to uh, visit, and it is incredible to see Americans and Canadians standing side by side in that operations center. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a singular signal that Canada and the United States stand together when it comes to the security uh, of our countries. Uh, and along those lines, uh, you know, I, I did see press reports that indicated that somehow we were not committed to the F-35. Let me make very clear that the United States is committed to the development of the F-35 and to a cooperative relationship uh, with the F-35 with our Canadian friends. The F-35 is going to be an essential fighter uh, that uh, will help in NORAD and will be the future in helping us with uh, the security challenges that we face. Uh, our troops have stood shoulder to shoulder, not only here but in Afghanistan and elsewhere uh, throughout the world. Uh, and in, uh, in Libya, we had the chance to work together to give Libya back to the Libyan people uh, and try to protect those people from a brutal regime. Uh, just as our men and women in uniform have partnered together so effectively, uh, Minister McKay and I have, have really, I think, uh, continued and strengthened a very warm relationship between our two countries when it comes to security. We had the opportunity to meet two months ago in Washington, uh, and we saw each other at the NATO ministerial. And uh, we've committed to continuing a dialogue uh, that will hopefully strengthen that uh, cooperation and relationship. As I did in Washington, and I, and I want to do here, I want to thank Canada in particular for the contributions in Afghanistan. Uh, you've had 150 Canadian heroes who've paid the ultimate price. Uh, and in Libya, where, the, where I met uh, the Canadian General Bouchard, uh, someone who is incredibly capable and instrumental in leading those successful operations, all of that uh, reflects the fact that we fight together and we bleed together uh, as one. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, participating in the security forum here this afternoon. Uh, and finally, let me just extend my thanks to the people of Canada uh, for the warm hospitality that they've provided me in the visit. Uh, I've, had, I've had cousins who've uh, come through Canada uh, and, uh, as part of my Italian heritage. And Canada, for me, is a very special place. Uh, together, uh, we are a powerful voice. United States and Canada, we represent a very powerful for, voice for, for peace, for freedom, for democracy, and for security. And Mr. Minister, you have my commitment that I will do whatever I can to ensure that we continue to strengthen that voice, not only in this hemisphere, but in the world. Thank you very much, Leon. So to begin, to begin questions, I will start with, uh, with Reuters. Mr. Stewart. Good morning, Mr. Secretary. Um, given U.S. assurances that the United States will not reduce its military posture in Asia or in the Middle East, what kind of cuts are being considered for the U.S. military in Europe? Uh, and is this something that will come up in your talks here in Halifax? Thank you. Uh, in, in reviewing, uh, obviously, the, uh, uh, the budget uh, 
that uh, we're, we're dealing with and uh, the budget requirements on savings that we've been given. Uh, the total number is about $450 billion plus that uh, the Congress uh, has asked us to uh, reduce the defense budget by over the next 10 years. Uh, and we've begun an extensive process within the Defense Department uh, to uh, review uh, all of the areas involved. Uh, there, there are three or four guidelines that are extremely important to me. Number one, uh, the United States is going to protect the best military in the world. We, we, we are the strongest in the world. We, we intend to remain the best military in the world. Two, I do not want to hollow out the force, uh, which is uh, something that's happened with past cuts, where cuts have been made across the board, weakening every area of defense. We are not going to do that. Thirdly, that leads me to uh, looking at a series of areas where we can try to achieve uh, savings. Uh, and those areas include efficiencies. They include procurement reform. Uh, they include uh, the area of uh, compensation. Uh, and they also include uh, force structure uh, reductions. All of those areas uh, are being looked at. Uh, we've, we, we've made no decisions uh, as to, uh, you know, what, uh, what areas uh, we will, in fact, uh, make the, the reductions, but uh, I think it's fair to say that everything is on the table, and we will do nothing without consulting with our allies so that they are aware of the decisions we, we make. There's no question we're going to be a smaller, agile, flexible, more deployable force. Our hope is to have a technological edge so that uh, we can really meet the challenges of the future. Uh, that, the, that's kind of a broad strategy guideline that we're going to use, but uh, with regard to uh, every area, including Europe, uh, our goal is to make sure that we're able to uh, maintain a relationship that allows us to uh, provide security not only in the Pacific and the Middle East, but also with regards to the Mediterranean arena as well. Uh, Radio Canada, who's the main question? Cooper, aux États-Unis, dans le système militaire. Est-ce qu'ici au Canada, vous craignez justement pour le programme d'achat des F-35 avec